carried. Thank you very much. Um, Peter, I think we can get through yours very quickly before the break. So this is just a, a very brief update on the LTP program plan. We've asked for this just to come as a standing item. Um, so in terms of uh, the implementation from that request, Peter, you've got a, a few things you're organising. Uh, look, this is very brief. Yeah. Um, over time, it will get a little bit, bit more detail. But uh, at the moment, it's just to emphasise that last month you approved a clear plan to deliver. Um, it's basically the pace is earlier, more transparent, and with better alignment. Um, we're, we've asked all the work streams, so the infrastructure strategy, for example, to prepare project plans about how they will deliver their component. So who, what, when, milestones, and we expect to report back to this committee on the basis of progress against those in coming months. Good. I mean, I, th I think the, the important thing is that two-day workshop, that that's locked in, because the, the sooner <coughs> the new council gets into the LTP, the better. That, that's understood. Um, it would be helpful if there could be a little further information on or steer on what you expect to cover in that workshop. Um, well, like, okay, well, we can maybe, um, yeah, in the next three months, we'll put something in where we can sit and discuss that. I would, I would suggest it's, it's setting the clear strategic directions and yep. what outcomes people are looking for. Uh, okay. But, you know, council can discuss that. Yeah, uh, Vicky? I just want to be clear that the resolution the council passed um, about what, two, three or four weeks ago, three weeks ago, um, on putting the two top strategic priorities as climate change and safe, sustainable water into the LTP is clear. The, the process is geared to incorporate some big themes at the start, so climate change, resilience, water, rather than try to build a business as usual plan and then run those filters over at the end, it's designed so that at the beginning, they go in the beginning. When people are building activity plans, building asset plans, that that thinking is there at the start. So we've got Mike and Mike Galuli and people like that involved at the beginning, not the end. Okay, and those two clear strategic directions that the overarching one start at the beginning. The people from strategic planning are in helping us make sure that those themes are there at the start. Those two themes. Understood. Okay, thank you. Um, Aaron and then Andrew. Yeah, I, Peter, I'm just wondering how much of the residence survey, like we saw this morning, which was pretty massive, will inform this. Uh, I just looked to a couple of the lowlights, like um, around people's uh, uh, satisfaction with roading, for instance, given this is the LTP, and uh, we were told this morning that we are 20 years away from having our roads back in pre-quake condition. That should be a big point in the LTP, because if the public are that unhappy, then they should be telling us how to spend our money when it comes to roading and at what time frame, and we need to be open and clear about what that costs yes. to change that delivery date. Will Look, that and any other lowlights and highlights in there inform the document? Short answer is yes, because the process is fronted by an environmental, environmental scan. Okay, yep. so in that you'll get the usual demographic information, what's happening with the population, economy, all that sort of stuff. But there'll also be what's the learnings from the resident survey? Um, what's the learnings from the central city survey? Um, the whole raft of, of stuff, and it's, it's, it's quite a lot because mm. it, it reflects what's happening across the region, mm. which is complex. Yeah. Now often, a lot of councils, in my experience, they get one of those environmental surveys and they go, oh, they, it's sort of infotainment. You know, it's, it's interesting, and then you get on with doing the, the process. It actually needs to be the start of the process so that those low lights, highlights, all those things become part of how you do it, yeah. as opposed to some infotainment at the front. Yeah, yeah. great. Andrew? Thank you. Um, paragraph 5.5 5 in the report, um, the premise of the plan is that all key components, strategies, activity plans, asset management plans will be complete in draft form by June 2020. Um, obviously, a, a document in draft may need further work before it's able to be adopted. I'm assuming that that's been taken into account with that timeline. And also, I'm assuming that there is a, a degree of confidence that whilst that's a, a target, it's a target that is realistic and likely to be achieved. What we wouldn't want is a lot of that work been disjointed 
realising that there are different work streams in different parts of council that would lead to that point, we wouldn't want that work being disjointed and not landing um, by June 2020 and then obviously experiencing pressure and delays beyond that. Is there any comment on that that either could outline any challenges or, or give us a degree of confidence that that will be achieved? Well, you come to the, the crux of, of what the, the new process looks like in that June 2020 to see that material has never been achieved before. Um, traditionally, uh, that sort of stuff is available to Council in November of that year rather than June. The idea is to start early, to have those drafts ready six months before you normally see them in order to allow Council to understand them and to check uh, alignment and to work through those documents. So that instead of a late rush in October, November of meeting, 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 activity plan, infrastructure strategy, there's time to move through it in a measured manner a bit at a time. To achieve that, um, because June is quite early, um, the objective is to make sure that every key component, the financial strategy, the infrastructure strategy, has a clear project plan with milestones of its own so that if anything starts to slip, that is immediately goes up as a red flag. So that if, and I mean, the obvious example is the IS, the infrastructure strategy, is a complex document. It's the hard one to get right. You need to be sure that the options being put to council are pitched at the right level, that the information is clear. Um, then that demands a project plan that will deliver on time and quick escalation if it isn't looking right. So that's the steps that are being put in place. Those plans are being asked for by the 25th of this month. Uh, from there, the program group will make sure that they all work together so that things are going to be happening at the right time to link up. And then it will go to the executive team to make sure that they approve the approach being taken. That includes monthly reporting. It's going into an IT system for monthly reporting against each milestone by each manager. So instead of the verbal biosmosis kind of approach, it's going to be quite rigorous as project management. It's the same project management approach that we take for a capital project. So red lights, flags, comments at every, at every milestone. And if any of those components do experience slippage, if we get to a point where we're not confident that all of that will be achieved by um, June 2020, the reporting on that obviously would be to the project oversight group. They would become aware of it, reporting into ELT. And yes. would that be reported to us through this report as well? Well, the scope of the project plan steps, sets out that the reporting is to both ELT and to this committee because the LTP is under the oversight of this committee. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Peter. Just in relation to this, that same paragraph, um, I'm just wondering, is, it, is it, when it comes to the activity management plans, will there be... I'm assuming there will have been an opportunity for some engagement with community groups and some consultation around some, some of those that will preferably as many as possible of those, those plans. Is that, well, am I right? are you talking about by June? No, no, just no, before, as part of the, of the ongoing um, long-term uh, okay. long plan process. I guess there's, there's two steps. One, one is to actually create the plans um, and have them uh, ready as a first draft, if you like. For, for this committee to consider. There's, within that six month window, now remember there's, there's six months between that stage and a draft, it's actually seven to eight months, and a draft LTP being built. That's the period when you can not only test that the content is working for councillors, but also test it with um, boards and the community. There's discussions to be had. We, we, I don't want to preempt what the comms plan, the engagement plan will say, but I imagine, uh, from discussions had so far, there will be some pre-engagement built into this LTP. So in other words, we won't build a draft and then ask people what they think. We will engage them with them in the building of the draft. Yeah. So Peter, that, that sounds def de definitely a positive step. And I guess I'm thinking particularly because, we move, we, as with many of the strategies, we move from the strategy phase mm -hmm. to developing action plans, which become activity plans. That, that's the bit that... Um, I guess it, I believe it would be important for um, as many as possible of the community to make comment on those. I understand. It, all of it relies on the, the, the councillor's ability to have oversight and the community's ability to be involved in pre-engagement yep. all hinge on the components being ready 
in June rather than November. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's why the strict rigour is going to be put around the project planning for each work stream. Yeah. Sounds good. Thanks very much, Peter. Glenn. Thank you, and thank you for this, Peter. Uh, it strikes me in this that a fundamental part of all our planning is the fact that, and it's a bit similar to the questions before, for instance, while we may not uh, borrow for something like the entire, you know, the capital program, we still plan and rate for it. That's Would I correct. be right? And have you got any additional comments on that? Um, well, it's true. There's a difference between the, the, the borrowing for the capital program, which is not for the full capital program. That's the Diane judgment call. But we do plan and rate for it in the sense that, that we, we have it at a certain level and that drives how the plan works and the phasing and the, the rating for that plan. And the borrowing and the rating, are the, uh, the, the, the size of the pr program are two different things. Yeah, they are two different things. And, no, and so it's we're not doing the LTP today. Sorry? We're not doing the LTP today. No, I know. But, you know but <coughs> we've had this question already. Yeah. We've had explanations already. Right. It's not really relevant to this. Yeah, I feel like I'm peeling off an onion. I want to get to the centre. No, so Save it for another time. Um, <laughs> Dion? Yeah, just um, very... <laughs> Thanks, Jamie. <laughs> James. No, it's James. Oh, my. Um, you, you mentioned pre-engagement. Uh, I just want to understand, is there an opportunity to use the third year of the annual plan from the LTP as a pre-engagement type tool for building the next LTP? If it were to eventuate that uh, we don't consult on an annual plan in 2020, um, say that were to happen, uh, that does open up a lot of resources and time to do pre-engagement towards an LTP. But even if we did consult on an annual plan, can we use that as an opportunity, everybody's going to be doing the work, to actually start talking and pre-building the LTP and engaging in that space? You could certainly pre-engage and do an annual plan as well. Um, lots of councils do do pre-engagement. In other words, mm. what would you like to see in mm. the LTP like this before is, we build a draft? Yeah, like this is the we're doing the budget this year. Next year we're doing a big one. Things need to change. Okay, that's cool. Uh, if you if you if you sandwich the two processes together, people get confused. But yeah, there's no reason why that. you can't run them concurrently. You just need to make sure that you're talking to people about two different subjects. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Food for thought, and I look, suppose. Basically, when the project plans arrive at the end of the month, there will be one of them will include a comms and engagement plan, and that should foreshadow how that might work, and and you might want to go through that. Jimmy, thank you. The uh, five point four. I'm concerned the timing and the, uh, also the uh, the uh, the sequence uh, because the. We are all aware you know, those the strategic framework or so strategic direction or resilient theme should be the first you know, to be the uh, uh, decided you know, and then all those uh, programs the plan you know, will be follow this uh, strategic direction so but uh, now uh, those draft long term plan program plan already done you know, my concern the question is whether after the, the next term, the, the new council, you know, if the, those the strategic direction is different from the list term, whether all the management level, those the, uh, the program plan, you know, no matter those the, uh, the, the asset management the strategy or the finance or some other the kind of, of the infrastructure strategy, will be modified and amended. This is my concern. Well, look, to meet the June deadline for 2020, yeah. the guys are working now on the components, uh, asset plans, activity plans, so forth. Yeah. However, the two-day workshop that the chair has talked about, in the last meeting there was, I think from memory, some discussion about, <coughs> if you like, reaffirming the strategic directions so that um, even though a lot of progress will have been made by November when the workshop happens, um, if there were any refinement to those strategic directions, that would be the point to know so that that can be built in early enough. The, the danger would be that we go flat out for 12 months and then in June of next year find that 
there's rethink of the strategic directions, which would be a problem. Yeah, so that's why we're having the workshop, Jim. Yeah. So that's the that's the critical nature of the workshop. Okay, um, Pauline. Um, following on from what Dion was asking, so just to be clear, um, if there's no significant changes in an annual plan, we're not leave, we don't have to consult. That's correct. So we could. So what would be the process if we were to uh, work towards making a decision? not to consult next year in order for staff to free up some time to work on the LTP. What is the process? You would need to determine what the nature of your changes are and whether any of them trip uh, the need for a, an annual plan, consultation. You will need an annual plan, but if the changes are of, of minor nature and none of them trip the need to consult, uh, you, you basically make a determination based on what kind of changes you've got. Right. So to do that sooner rather than later would be preferable. Preferable. That's right. And, and a, a refinement of that, it's not worth going into now, but um, it, briefly, if your changes are relatively few, there may not be a need to have an entire annual plan consultation. You might just consult on those changes, oh, okay. which is still a saving of hundreds of, of hours yes. of yeah. councillor and staff time yeah. over consulting on everything. Yeah, and that's what I'm hearing. Yeah. Okay, great. Oh, thank you. Okay, thank you, Peter. Um, I'm happy to move. We receive this report. Seconded, Mike. Any discussion? Put the motion. All in favour say aye. Aye. Again, that's carried. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Peter. We're going to have a quick break now. Come back at 11:30 sharp. Thank you.
Uh, we have item 14, Central City Residential Development. Um, hello. Right. Where you go. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm just here to uh, present the report for you today, uh, Central City Residential Event Mechanism Incentives. Um, this might be a familiar topic um, to those of you who have attended the Central City Development Forums of late, um, where this has been a topic of discussion. Um, but just, just to give you a quick overview, um, the report itself um, is, is part of the ongoing response to the Council resolutions of uh, September last year um, around the Central City Residential Programme. Um, specifically uh, around residential development service and incentives for development. Um, and um, also this is reports direct response to the Council Resolution of the 12th of February Annual Plan around mechanisms and incentives. Um, and it also um, uh, responds to some of those uh, discussions from the, um, the Central City Development Forum, which I mentioned. Um, and also um, responds to the, some of the findings of the Property Council report, which was presented uh, to Council last year. Um, so the two main recommendations um, on the report today are around um, uh, an allocation of funding to provide um, advice and support to, for early discussions for residential de development projects, um, and also around... Um, um, endorsing a review of the rates remission policy um, with a mind to considering how a rates remission may incentivise um, demand and, and supply for new homes in the central city. Um, and a further resolution to notice just um, that um, we will be returning to council um, to discuss a wider range of uh, mechanisms and incentives which will um, uh, be uh, responding to the conclusions of the uh, barriers to residential development work which um, Development Christchurch Limited have been completing for us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> any questions? Uh, Tim? Andrew? Thank you. With regards to number two, one of the um, Anecdotally, what we continue to hear is the pricing of the or the cost of moving into the central city, the price of the the, 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 the apartments, etc. When you look at outside the avenues, uh, you know it, it, the price drops considerably. So I can't quite see how a, uh, looking at a rates remission will affect the actual buy price, which is, seems to be one of the issues that you hear. What is the logic of this rates remission? Jamie? If I, if I can make a comment just from the development forum then. Um, you're, you're right, but there's two elements to, to the purchasing. There's developer suite of incentives and purchaser suite of incentives. The buy price will be reflective of the developer incentives because whatever the development costs are, are passed on which uh, to the purchaser, so that's what makes the end price. The other side of um, the equation is the incentives for the purchaser, and that, and, and whilst obviously price of the dwelling is um, a part of that, it's also other issues such as what incentives exist to make it worth their time to, to consider purchasing. So whether it's a rates remission or school zones or amenity value, those are um, consumer uh, or purchaser based incentives. So I think. You can't look at e either of them in isolation. There needs to be the development side to ensure the development happens, which will probably be reflective on price. But price isn't just the only driver, just as you know, um, salary isn't the only motivator for an employee. It's also conditions and all these sorts of things. So the, the rates for emission, I guess, is an operational cost for a resident that um, is a significant carrot. I don't know if that I mean, this, remember, this helps. is a review of the policy. It's not actually, we've got no recommendations to consider. Yeah. Um, um, sorry, but Andrew, then Vicky. Yeah, my um, questions also relate to this um, rates remission policy. Um, clearly, there's a, a cost in doing the work around a review of the policy. Um, and I imagine there would be some, you know, we've got this um, resolution here in front of us, resolution two, to consider how rates remission may be used to encourage demand for supply of new central homes in the central city. I'm assuming that that would lead to a point where there would be a draft policy put in front of council that would need to be approved for consultation that would then land in the 2021 um, LTP. 
Um, what I wouldn't want to do is to get to a point, and of course we've got to realise that the council that would approve that for consultation won't be this council, it'll be a future council. Um, I wouldn't want us to get to a point where we'd spent a whole heap of time and energy getting to a point where there was a policy proposed that wasn't politically acceptable to the council of the day, and that's very difficult to predict. So I guess my question really comes around elected member involvement and decision points in any such review, so that if it is moving down a track where there isn't political support, particularly from the new council, that we're able to prevent staff doing a whole heap of work preparing a draft that we wouldn't then be comfortable going out for consultation with. I guess it's how we build in elected member involvement and decision gateways so that we can reduce the risk of spending a heap of time and energy on something that doesn't make the political grade when it comes to the council table. So the, the next step um, in looking at a rates submission policy would be to prepare the, the, the project plan around how to approach that. And, and certainly all, all, the, all the points made there around um, having decision pathways and decision points can, can be built into that project plan. Um, in terms of the, the, the details of reviewing the, the actual policy itself, um, it's not something that I would be directly involved in, um, except in the, the policy side, uh, effectively, to, to look at the objective of, of why you would introduce a rate submission policy. So the, the, the mechanism for the review um, uh, is, is with different staff and council, but I can certainly, in terms of inputting into the project plan for how that review is undertaken, we can take those, those points on board. Okay, thank you. Uh, Vicky? Questions. First on the 100K, which is not within the current annual plan, what actually is provided that is not currently available from our um, uh, people? Okay, I can respond to that. Um, so at the moment we have um, pre-application service mm. and partnership approvals. They're paid services. So um, there's a whole lot of work that we do at times right up front. Um, where we engage with people who have portfolios of work and often we can't charge or recover that time so we have to kind of stop and we're limited on actually how much work we can spend in that space uh, where we have had a little bit of capacity and someone's had you know, particular difficulties uh, we've gone into that space um, and the benefits that we've got out of that have been quite you know, substantial. And we've got some examples where um, you know, some residential developer, one, one residential developer I can think of in particular, um, had said that they were ready to give up. Uh, and they had um, around two hectares of central city land and a whole lot of ideas for that. So um, we worked with DCL um, and worked on that relationship with them and um, looked at how we could make it easier for them to, to get their projects so, to, to go ahead. So we're and actually we're, doing this at the moment? Yeah, we're doing some of that now, but we get to a point where we have to stop because the staff have time recovery, cost recovery targets, and we use a little bit of public advice money, um, but we, right. we actually can't do as much as we'd really like to do in that space. So this is a service that's currently being provided? It's just that you want some more budget? To be able to do um, it we're, we're providing it um, through necessity rather than through planning that service. So uh, we would plan it um, in a different way and target people and approach them first rather than being you know, an ambulance at the bottom of the cliff type service. Um, we never say no to anybody who approaches us for some assistance, but we, there's a whole lot of people out there that we know we can target and get better quality outcomes and get them um, moving at a higher pace with the developments that they're putting into the city. Uh, can I just clarify the rates remission policy? Because we already have a DC remission for the central city, right? 10 million? So if you build in the central city, you don't pay DCs for residential apartments, and I think maybe some of the commercial ones are now okay as well yeah yes yep yeah. so could you explain the rates remission how it would work so um, somebody comes along and builds and buys and is the owner occupier of a 1.9 million dollar apartment in the central city say we provide rates remissions um, for that person for say two to three years as a sweetener so that the people in Limwood on their $300,000 property help pay their rates. Is that what's intended? So, so, so Councillor Buck, the, um, the work, this um, resolution is about endorsing a, a review of the rates remission policy. You have described um, uh, 
I guess one uh, one option that might be in there in, in a general sense, but that's the reason for actually undertaking this work is to dig into um, is to dig into the buyer um, the, the buyer side of the equation and actually understand more about how this lever could be used to uh, um, to most effect. And can you define so, so you've defined the central city as the four avenues, correct. On the other side of um, the four avenues, you don't get it. You're on this side, you do. Correct. Right. Um, and just in terms of rates for emissions, they're quite limited in terms of how they can operate, aren't they? There's not an amazing amount of creativity within the Rating Act. You either pay rates or you have a remission from rates, like churches do, for example. Uh, I'm not the expert on rates, but um, but just in I terms of so. a review of the rates remission policy would be an unusual. Like the Rating Act is quite clear, and it's the major source of funding for local government. So either you say this class of of properties don't pay rates, and so everybody else picks up the rates, or something very similar. You don't have like an amazing range of creative possibilities within the Rating Act. I, I, I believe that's the case, but I would also point out that uh, in the report signals this, that, um, that this is the first of a suite of, um, of mechanisms that we would bring to council over the, over the uh, years that you have already endorsed for the Project 8011 project. Uh, to look at how we can um, incentivise and support your objective of 20,000 right. people in the central so, city. So uh, this would apply, sorry, to people just buying from the beginning of that policy. So if you bought this month, bad luck. If you buy in six months' time and the policy was in place, then you get this period of time when perhaps you don't pay rates. I presume so, although, I, again, we're not the experts on whether... Uh, you can uh, make any retrospectively. retrospective. No, okay. So there would no, be. I'm, be uh, the, the, um, I'm being told no. No, I know you can't. <laughs> so there would be a feeling of not only I'm looking in from outside the four avenues and these people are getting their rates from free, but also, well, I was here six months ago having tried to, having bought in the central city, but these people bought more recently and so they got theirs for free for three years or something. There would be quite an interesting reaction, I think, from a range of people. I, I think you have to remember, this is, this is really, should we review the rates emission policy to see if it's possible to use it to encourage demand? Th that's really all it's about. So well, I think with respect, it says endorses a review of it, and I'm assuming that this is a request from the Development Forum. Is that right? To do so. I think the problem is we, we keep jumping to conclusions. It's, the work hasn't even been done. No, it, um, it says... So it's really a question of... Do you think any work should be done? If not, no. If yes, well, let's see what that looks like. Um, so I've got Leanne and then Dion. Although well, no, mine wasn't a question, I thought we'd start a debate. Not yet. We'll come back to you then. Um, Dion? Dion? What? You had a question? Sorry. No? Okay. Um, yes. This is like, would this be like um, project, uh, sorry, the, uh, the rebuild central kind of scenario that we had straight after the earthquake which helped front load a lot of the development stuff or questions and queries is that what I'm kind of getting with this um, it has some similarities but it isn't the same thing at all no um, there's something missing up front here and you know DCL does some of this work around feasibility um, but you know, there's, there's a lot of work needed um, to actually build strong relationships with those developers out in the mm. development community and get them activating projects. And you know, one of the things we, we've looked at and we've had this question a few times, um, what about providing free pre-apps or free consent fees? And when we've talked to the development community about that, they're not really that interested in, in that because by then they've done all of their costings, they know what their program is and they can build those in. It's this early work um, where cycling projects into <coughs> 
you know, reality and getting them going is critical because it's costing them money to hold land and a lot of those things are very difficult for them to control and that's where the big money is for them. So we think we can assist people, bring these projects to life and make things happen that we're not seeing happen now. So, so just for an example of what we've had before and now what we've got, did what we had before in Rebuild Central, how you did this for those commercial buildings, did, are you seeing now that we're sort of having less desirable outcomes than we did back then and some of the cons stuff that we're seeing through consents when they come to us? Um, I, I don't know that uh, anything's changed in that regard, um, but you know we always come across, and, and you know, I guess residential development is, is growing in the city. There's a lot of quite ex experienced commercial developers around, and there's some new um, residential developers coming on stream that need assistance who aren't familiar with various processes. And um, you know we have conversations about things like um, what type of designer and design professionals are you using? Um, do you have you know, an urban design specialist and a landscape mm. specialist? Um, mm -hmm. Has your designer designed a commercial build type building before, even though it's residential and it's multi um, unit? Uh, it's more like a commercial building than a house. So now that we've signed, well, now that we've declared this climate emergency thing, mm. we could have used this as an opportunity to say to these um, uh, residential developers, hey, here's some options about making your building greener. Or is that the kind before they actually start getting stuff on paper? Yeah, if, if that's if that's um, your desire, um, then we could have those types of conversations. Well, lead them into where they get that type of information. Yeah. So this yeah. actually, so that that would you know tying all yeah. that together would be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. So at, at this at this time, um, people don't necessarily have an appreciation for something they might pay for. Like uh, by the time they get to typical pre apps or a partnership approvals type service. They're more than happy to pay for that, um, but this very early stuff, when um, things are just kind of growing their initial, um, you know, roots from the ground, mm. um, there's not a strong appreciation for what they, you know, you can't send them a bill for that work, I guess. Okay, okay, Glenn. Thanks. I'm on, on the developer forum. We hear about DC rebates regularly, but um, rates remission is not leaping out at me. Has this been a, a common theme that's come through? <coughs> from de the development community. So, so the um, where this um, where this has come from is that uh, as part of Project Data Eleven, um, the, the one of the um, pieces of work in there was around looking at um, incentives for um, for achieving 20,000 people in the central city. So that work, that initial work was done to work out what the long list of potential incentives were, and there have been two. Um, workshops with the development forum, one last year and one in March this year, um, where we were um, we were working with the forum to take the long list to get to a shorter list of um, of incentives that um, that from the development community's perspective could be more acceptable, so that we could investigate those in more depth. And this is one that has come through that process, as well as the work that DCL has undertaken for us. Um, Tim. Thank you. Um, should, I mean, point three is just for noting, so, but shouldn't point two, as in the rates remission, be included in that work in number three? Because it just seems that we're going to be picking off one bit that actually may not be the, the game changer, but included in a package of other things it may be. So I'm, I'm just a bit confused because I totally understand where number three is coming, and that's probably what we've been asking for and some idea of getting a, an idea of what the, the, the handbrakes are, pricing, etc. And, you know, like getting them with, 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 with no rates or reduced rates for a few years and then ping them later on, which is, you know, um, basically a sales pitch. But in the big picture, that may not be the issue. So we've lost on rates and it hasn't actually changed anything until we see that report with regards to item three. I think that's a, a, a fair comment on, on there's no one incentive yep. or mechanism which, which is the game changer, yep. um, but they all have their role, their role to play. Um, if, if we look at rates, it's very much geared towards the demand side of the equation. Mm. We're trying to increase demand, make a point of difference for, mm. for the central city, um, and it doesn't, it doesn't af necessarily affect the, um, the price of the, the dwelling, but if it affects the, the ongoing cost of living in the central city relative to somewhere else, then then it could potentially increase demand. 
Um, and the knock-on effect for the, for the developers is that um, an increase in demand gives them more confidence to, mm. to build. It lowers the risk, um, particularly for the central city. It may increase the level of pre-sales, for example, which is identified as a particular barrier for, for development in the central city. So, it's and that and there are a number of ways to to approach those sorts of issues, and this is just one of them. Um, and nothing's going to be um, instrumental on its own. It's, it's got to be a part of the package. Um, we we. S Pick that one out, um, partly yep. because we were asked to respond more directly to it um, through previous council resolutions, um, also to respond to some of the, um, the uh, discussion at the development forum, um, but also just um, to actually start get getting this into play because there is a, um, uh, a process to actually review the policy and, and do the consultation and engagement around that. Because it's, it's interesting that we've got DCs within the central city, we've got, so we've got those sorted but there's still an issue, and now we're going to use rates to be reduced, but there's no guarantee. I mean, it's, I just think we need an overall plan and with a list of options in one hit, rather than higgledy-piggledy, because, you know, look, I, I still hear anecdotally, why would you be inside the four avenues when you can a lot better outside the four avenues? And we talked about the environment, etc. and should there be some incentives, because you're not using so many greenhouse gases travelling if you're in the central city. So there's a whole lot of stuff, a whole lot of work. I mean, I, I, I'm just, you know, just wondering, is, should this wait to get the overall report as noted in point three? I, that's a council decision. Okay, I would suggest yeah. that the central city action plan is, is exactly that. Yep. Uh, just a couple <coughs> of questions. Um, so. There have been a couple of developers' workshops um, as well as the development forum, and you've reported the, um, the results of the developers' workshop to the, um, to the forum uh, on a couple of occasions, one in October last year and one in um, March this year. And uh, as a result, there's, there's kind of been a list of things that have kind of come out of that, but they're coming back as I understand it, through the um, development forum, which is not scheduled till um, towards the end of July, June, I think it's uh, 25th, or 25th, 26th, or 26th of June, of June, with the council meeting receiving the report the following day. Is that Have I got that schedule right in my mind? Yes, but it'll be the prior report, just from timing. Yeah, because, I mean, one of the things that's really come out of that is, is, is this feedback about funding being a major obstacle to development and banks being reluctant to lend on apartment buildings. Um, and I look at those empty spaces that ought to be apartment buildings and I think the rates that we're receiving on, those, on that bit of land is the rates for undeveloped land um, inside our four avenues. And instead, I'm thinking, when they build an apartment with a building with 10 apartments in it, then we get 10 rates um, in return. And so would your idea in terms of having a conversation or a, a, um, a, a sort of a consideration of a rates remission, would it actually consider a range of options, including where undeveloped land is actually turned into apartments, that it's rated as one piece of development rather than the individual apartments that it is? because the benefit of doing that goes to the purchaser. And once people have actually you know, put their signature on the offer to buy um, off the plan, then the getting the money out of the banks um, is made way easier. So I mean, this has been an issue that's been on the agenda uh, for quite some time. It's finally coming to a point where we're able to go out and actually um, talk about it as a concept with a range of options being considered. So you're not going out with just one option, you'd go out with a range of options. Correct. Yep. That was my question. Your question? Okay. Um, and did you have a question? I'm signalling amendment. Okay. okay. Yep, well, we haven't moved anything. Could, so. could, I, could I move the current one then so then it that leaves it open for an amendment? Yeah. So if I move the staff recommendations, then that allows Andrew to okay. put an so amendment. So move, Jamie, seconded, Dion. Andrew, you want to signal an amendment? Um, yeah, so my amendment would be to strike out clause two mm -hmm. and add wording to clause three. And this really reflects the question and answer from um, Tim. Um, 
so just add wording to three, including consideration of how and whether a review of the rates remission policy may have application in this regard. Because what I've heard through the questions is a lot of um, discomfort with what a review of the rates remission policy might bring about. I've heard that it would be good to consider this at the same time as we consider other mechanisms and the wider problem, and then the issues that I raised through my questions, which really are around not wanting to expend a heap of time and money on something that wouldn't be supported when it came back to the table as a draft. So I think it just allows for further work to be done on what the scope and likely scope of outcomes of a review of the policy might be so that we can give some guidance on whether those are the sort of things that we would support or wouldn't. Um, I just think there's, a, there's another stage required before we can do what two is suggesting, which is um, commence the review. I think we need to know what the review might look like, what the scope of the outcomes from it might be, because if it was only to be the sort of scenario that Vicky decided, um, that Vicky described, then we may have a different view than something that incentivised, for example, large numbers of smaller dwellings that were affordable. Um, and I think we need that information before we can really agree to, um, to two. Happy to second it. So just check the wording there, Andrew. Sorry, what was that? Just check the wording that we've yeah. got. There. Can we I mean, see? It's just about having a scope of what the review would cover and what the likely outcome would be. Um, so, you know, it's the third one. Because the first one says do review, and then Yeah. No, it's not. It's what, what I'm saying is leave. Well, it can be, treat it as you wish. I don't mind. Yeah. Um, and maybe we need some advice on that. Um, but um, I mean, my view would be that it's allowing the thing that's suggested to quite possibly go ahead. It's just deferring a final decision on it, pending some further advice being brought. Out to is the direct negative. No, because it added some word in. So yeah, but that's just a um, there, there are probably there, there are yeah, there are two approaches you could take. It's been moved and seconded, and you've, you've foreshadowed an amendment. They could, you could debate and put the motion, and then if you put them separately and if um, item two isn't passed, you can signal that you want an amendment, or you, with the agreement of the mover and the seconder, make the amendment now. Do I need the agreement of the mover and seconder to propose an amendment? No. no. no not, not, not to propose an amendment, no. Yeah, what, what, you... I've a, what I've asked, and I mean the chair will make a ruling on it on advice, I would imagine, is that I want an amendment to the motion which has been moved and seconded to be considered. I'm calling it an amendment, which is to strike out one clause and replace it with some wording in the, in the third clause. Right. If the chair wishes to deal with that as an amendment, then yeah. that's what we'll do. Good. And if that he doesn't, good. then... Yes. No? Why is not? it not an amendment? Well, I'm, I'm an, amendment has, an amendment can't be a direct opposite direct to... negative. No, yeah. I, so I agree with that. But, 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 but so what, that means what, if you want to what is, what, is, yes. what is proposed, though, is that, um, the, uh, that item three would be amended to include the provision in item two, um, which is along the lines of what um, Councillor Scandrit was, was suggesting and... and um, Andrew's picked up, but if I, I come back to the point that if, if the mover and the seconder are happy, I, I don't think there's really too much of an issue with regard to negativity, um, because it is just putting it in a different way in a different part of the resolution. But if, one if says you're not to do going it. to do that, then vote on this one, um, put them separately. You'll foreshadow an amendment if it's. If, second, if the second item isn't passed, you'll no doubt amend, uh, put your amendment. To three, which by that point will have already been passed? Uh, no. Well, that... <coughs> yes, it would have. But one of them... But... The no. current number two says we endorse the review, and the proposed number two says come back and make a decision on whether we go for a review. So they're quite different. So that's why we need to, in my view, that would be why we need to deal with mine as an amendment before we vote on two and before we vote on three. Otherwise, you'll vote on three and then need to immediately amend three if two doesn't pass and then my amendment goes through yeah, or I'd, whatever we call it. I'd, I'm happy with that. There was some yeah. concern as to whether or not it was a negative. direct negative. I actually don't think 
that it is, and I, well, I think what you're proposing. Well, there's three different things. I don't intend to vote for one, and I do intend to vote for two. So it, they do need to be put separately. Yes. And if that's the case, then two needs to be put as it was moved and seconded. And um, and if it is if it is carried, that's the end of the matter. If yes. it's not carried, then um, then that's when um, the new two comes into play. So it's not to be dealt with as an amendment. What do you mean comes into play? You mean well, two? The the removal of two is a complete negative of item two. You're either for item two or you're against it. But the proposal is that essentially. What I, item two was to cover is going to be included in item no, three. No, it's not. No, it's not. That's a matter of opinion. That, it's not a legal advice on the putting of the motion. I'm sorry, through, through you, Mr. Chair. It's a whole rather than bits and pieces. That's, that's yeah. what it is about. I guess we just it's still, two. It's still no. referring to the to a possible or consideration of a possible review of the policy. Could well, I propose another amendment to? Two. No, no, no. Um, what is it an amendment? No, this is genuinely an amendment, just what? to two, so, so that it says um, endorses a. Um, well, because uh, endorse might be um, agrees agrees instead of a daughter endorses two. Is that right? Oh, no. Eh? Yep. Um, and then um, that will. No. Uh, consider a range of options in relation to rates remission that may be used to encourage demand for and supply of new homes in the central city. But then how does that differ to three? Eh? Because number three says come back and ask us again. Number, two no. says well, no. number three is about a whole package and come with a number well, of options. I've put forward wording that I want to consider. Was. I don't care how it's considered, but I want my wording considered. Yeah, yeah. No, it can be, but... Um, I was thinking, that sounds like it captures it. I think it's a good suggestion. And that should what? appeal, <coughs> I would have thought. I just think people have to remember that, that um, 4.18 sets out the council resolution. 14.18.2 says request DCL and the Chief Executive to report back and provide advice to the development forum within three months, which they did. Well, actually it was more than three months. On a range of tools, incentives and disincentives for land banking, undeveloped land, giving time frames for each action to fast track residential development and the regeneration of the central city to assist in achieving the goal of 20,000 people living within the central city by 2028. And I just feel like we're going backwards, so... Look, I um, don't know. I mean, I'll jump in here. Um, I mean, it seems to me that I think they've just jumped the gun a little bit by going straight to a review of the policy without providing some evidence as to what the policy might be able to do. So I, I think in terms of what Andrew is asking for, I would probably want to see some information which tells me that we should review hmm, the rate. But it's going to have some policy. value. I mean, we could do it. That's fine. But I'm, you know, I'd like to see things like, you know, if we had houses here, our rates take would go up X. You know, those kind of trade-offs. But I'm not seeing any of that information. So before saying let's review the policy, let's certainly look at the policy and see if there's stuff in there that might be helpful. Um, so look, yeah. Well, it's yeah, there's, exactly. There's a whole bunch of things we could do. So. I mean, Ian, I don't know what you think. I'm happy to actually consider the amendment yeah. first. That's, is that one and two? One and two. It's beyond yeah. me, yeah. And if that were... I thought, I thought what you suggested was... Um, and then if, if two obviously fails, then we'll go back to yeah. the other one. Okay. Well, could, could we find a way of actually um, asking staff to produce an options paper that enables us to consider um, rates for emissions as, as one of the tools for encouraging demand for and supply of new homes in the central city. Because number three, the new two, is just a noting that a further report, it's got no date. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to express a sense of urgency here. We've got the central city momentum. We had the advice about struggling. So we could we put a date on point two? And we could no, we could change I don't, it's not a noting. I just I'd think that we need request. to change that to a request to report. Yeah. Request to report be brought to council within a time frame if we wanted to. Yeah. I'm happy with that. 
Whatever works for people. Maximum three months. That's all. This was supposed to be done by the end of the year last year. Mm -hmm. I think if we might be a little bit colder about um, just calling the rights remission policy. For example, if you just read it on land, you would achieve the same thing in the central city. Mm -hmm. Yes. But there may well be other mechanisms within the rating policy that is not nearly as inequitable as this current rates remission policy would be. Well, we don't know what it is. The problem but is that there is not enough information here yeah. around a whole range of mechanisms with the trade-offs. A lot and of the, the information sits in the work that the development forum has been doing, That's the know, reason which I everyone's on. Consideration of the rates okay. remission okay. at the same time as yeah. we look I'd at like the other mechanisms, so that we a, can have a holistic view. A more view detailed of what we can report, achieve. which then says, <coughs> because we think this is a good idea, we should review the rates remission policy. Yeah. So request a report be brought to council. So are we saying, are we saying within three months? That's achievable. I'll bring the report to you as soon as I have it. Um, I'm expecting that any day now. So, so if we were going to put the shortest time limit in this wording that we possibly could, that you would be able to achieve? Report back in July. July? By the end of July. OK, so report back to council by the end of July. Did you say the work's already been done? You said yes, you because, the, because the resolution said to bring back the range of tools, incentives and disincentives for land banking, undeveloped land, giving time frames for each action. And Vicky's right. It may well be that one of the options is, in fact, um, changing to a, uh, a, a land uh, focus in, this, in the CBD on undeveloped land. But they've been doing this work yeah. since last year. Yeah. <coughs> so that didn't include the rights Yes, it did. So the information exists. So no, 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 no. The, point two, sorry, the two, development forum considered the, all of the it. options, and they said, for heaven's sake, make sure you focus on owner occupied. You don't want to actually give it to Airbnb. Um, and I agree, that was, that was a piece of their advice, but that report hasn't come to the council. So it's a sort of a deficiency okay, in the okay. process. Look, there's not enough, in, we need something which actually presents all the options. Yeah, okay? but mm -hmm. And then, if one of those options includes the rates remission um, policy, then that obviously needs to be reviewed. Yeah. But this is jumping to it without the suite of all the other options. Well, now that it's a requesting a report, it's got the end of July, it's talking about the barriers, which is what this was always about. Yes. And I, I re, barriers to residential development has to include land banking, yeah. um, including consideration of the rates remission policy. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I just wonder. It's, I, I don't think it's necessarily jumping to the to the end. I think what it's doing is that it, it's essentially just we have the central city action plan. There are a number of initiatives or a number of headlines there which which are problematic. My take on this is staff are taking the rates one, which is a reoccurring theme, and saying. Will you give us permission to go ahead and do some work around that? And I'm quite comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. Well, look, I, I'm happy to put the amendment mm. first. Yep. Are you um, are you good with that? Because if you're good with that, then I, I think it, it's yeah, I think it's a sensible amendment that can be incorporated into the substantive. So I'm fine with that. If um, okay, well, I'm going to put the amendment first. Well, and I'm going to put. But if we, we can incorporate it, it. No, 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 no. Okay. Let's just do no, this. Okay. okay. So we've got to here. Um, uh, any discussion? I think we've had quite well, a bit already. Can you put one separately? Because I don't. Well, we one's not, one and one two isn't the amendment anyway. The amendment only relates to two and three. Yeah, but we're going to put I'll put one and two separately anyway. Um, it, okay, so we. As the mover, Mr. Chair, I'm happy with what the amendment sort of says. It, it's 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 a more elegant way of achieving uh, what we want to achieve. So yeah, absolutely. I'm fine I'd just rather be... get on with it because yeah. we've spent yeah. enough time on this. Um, okay, so we'll move into debate. Okay, Andrew. Um, so exactly as I said, I think this needs more work before we can agree to a um, review of the policy. Um, it may well be that a review of the policy is the right thing, but it may not. And there are a number. There's a whole suite of um, a whole suite of things that we can consider. To to you know, we know what we want, want the result to be. It's just how we arrive at that. And it makes sense to consider the value of a rates remission policy for the central city at the same time as we consider other levers, which um, inevitably will be part of that report. Um, 
the, the questions that um, were put and the answers to them suggested that there is another stage we need to go through before we can agree to a review of the rates remission policy for Central City. We may or may not be comfortable with what might be able to be achieved through that. So the amendment that I'm suggesting, um, and as, as the Chair has also said, um, means that we do that work before we're asked to, to agree to the review, which will take time and, and expense, um, and may leave us, if we went with the original proposal in the embarrassing position of a report coming back with a, a draft um, proposal, which um, isn't capable of being supported for consultation at that time, which would be a complete waste of time. So I would um, encourage um, councillors to support the amendment as it's now put. It allows for a more sensible approach and certainly doesn't preclude a review of the rates remission policy for the central city if it turns out on more information that is likely to achieve the things that we're all trying to achieve here. Thank you. Vicky? Uh, I'm okay with a range of options coming back to us. I have a major problem with the concept of a rates remission for owner-occupiers in the central city that starts from a certain date and allows those people maybe a three-year rates holiday and the people next door to them who live in their own home um, and have done so right through the earthquakes, uh, no rates remission, and the people outside of um, the four avenues no rates for emission whatsoever um, for building new developments. I think there is a fundamental thing of equity and um, uh, we know some developments that are about to go ahead. The rates will be sort of $12,000 a unit possibly because they'll be up to $2 million units. Um, there will be a lot of units. The amount of money that we're talking here is huge. They are going to go ahead anyway. Uh, so I think there is a whole range of unintended consequences that happens from a central city rates remission. So I'm okay with the work coming back so we have a range of things, but I suspect that what you're trying to achieve of helping people to build on empty land is better achieved through different mechanisms, and that the rates remission one it will have so many unintended consequences that are so inequitable across the city that it's not a go. So I'm struggling with the actual resolution, um, but at least we'll have the whole um, report on a whole range of mechanisms so we can opt for some that make sense. Mm -hmm. Tim? Thank you. All I asked for was a holistic look at the options to look at the central city. We came up some time ago, and I say we as a council and other organisations that were connected <laughs> after the um, earthquake, with a figure of 20,000 people moving into the central city. I don't, and I never have seen the logic of that. Could have been 30, 25, could have been 15,000. How many of those people, when the work was done, can actually afford the value of the properties that are being sold? We've now got DCs, and now we're saying, oh, look, let's look at um, rates for emission because that'll help. A number of things we've put up there to help have not helped. We've got to look at this as a big picture if we're going to succeed. You can go outside the, the avenues. I know this personally because we've had property outside there which we've currently sold. But, but it's so much cheaper to go from outside and then through what's been done with the district plan, it's an incentive <laughs> to infill those outer areas which is far cheaper. So we're cutting our own throats. So I think we've got to look at this holistically, get a really good plan together if in fact it is achievable to get 20,000 people in the central city and go forward. This is probably, I think, with the information put up with this report, the best way forward. We need to get the information to move forward properly and I think this is going to help. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Glenn? Thank you. I'm not going to support this today. Uh, amendment included. It feels a bit like the failed flag debate which let um, two steps instead of one. So it asked for, what do you think of this option, um, broader political context graph, rather than do you want to have this discussion, it still um, has a foot in the door over rates for emission and similar to Vicky, I can't support that. What about the existing homeowners in the suburbs struggling to pay the rates we impose on them? And uh, those stats over that um, are climbing. Uh, the developers already have DC rebates, which is what I've heard them uh, talk about the most on the developers' forum, and even that doesn't have as big an uptake as we uh, expected. My concern here too is if something like a uh, rates remission policy was pursued within the four AVs, uh, it, it would serve to divide the city between those within the four AVs and those in the suburbs. It's unfair 
on working families, and I'm not going to support it. Ironically, on page 524, it talks about one of the disadvantages being uh, increased OPEX budget demands, and, and the rating impact just on this alone is 0.02%. And you all know how all the 0.02s and 0.1s, etc., add up because it's OPEX that that puts up rates. I'm not going to support it. Thank you, Glenn. Anyone else, Mike? Thanks. I will be supporting the amendments. Actually, very good. Um, I think it's really important. Like, we need to make sure that our city centre actually works, and we need to make sure that we get actually the 20,000 people in there. I mean, we need to be having a conversation about what we can do, and we need to look at the initiatives that we can actually apply. Um, I, I think, actually, we've just declared a climate emergency, and we've accepted that, actually, our biggest um, issue is transport, sitting at 53.1 per cent of our emissions. Um, actually, if we can get people living in the CBD, then we're actually going to be getting them out of cars, because in the CBD, you can walk, and you can bike, and you can access so much stuff. So if we're serious, if we're serious actually about cutting our transport emissions, what we need to do is look at how we can actually get more people living in the CBD. Um, Phil and Sarah. Um, look, I am going to support it. I, I think it is a good way forward. Um, there's no question that everybody at this council table wants our, our central city to develop. And it's, it's how we do it. And, and I think clearly the staff have done a lot of work on this. It's just a matter of getting the information to us as a council. And the, I think this amendment cuts it. Um, I think it's, it's just a fact that we have not all been at the development forum and that clearly needs to be um, cl clearer links um, f from, that, from the discussions that have happened there. But I, I, all to, altogether, um, I think this d does achieve um, what... Um, James originally set out to achieve, perhaps, and I'm going to support it. Okay, Sarah. Thank you. Um, I'm going to support this too. I just hope that we do it really quickly because I think there's a there's a potential for some perverse outcomes um, with a review um, when people may expect a rates remission um, in the central city. It may put them off purchasing right now, and we really don't want that to happen. We don't want people to delay moving into the central city just in case they might get a discount later. So I think the quicker the better. Um, Dion. Yeah, I'm gonna, <coughs> excuse me. I'll, I will support it. Um, it's a means to an end. I can see where it's where it's going. But um, I, I too uh, echo the sentiment. This needs to happen relatively quickly because there is a, a slowdown of of activity. And I mean, we need to be front loading, um, not not from a financial point of view, but from a leadership point of view in the city to say, hey, look, we back. <coughs> The central city. It's where we're investing billions of dollars, uh, as part, you know, on our share and the crown share to make this thing work. What's not happening is there's no um, huge uptake of of residential in the central city. Last month there was three properties consented within the four avs. It's not a lot. Um, this is this is this is serious. So we do need these suite of uh, things to to come back. Project 8011 was pitched up there as you know, being able to do these things. I, I'm still, you know, question where that's going, but I would like to hope that we start getting some forward momentum once we get some things back. And on a rates remission thing, Wellington have approved one uh, late last year, uh, five thousand dollars per per house for first home buyers uh, for apartment buildings and properties within their central area. Uh, it does work. Um, I'm just looking at some of the reports there. So I think there are ways that we can do this. I really uh, also echo the, um, the sentiments of the Mayor around land value uh, and rating some of these empty properties at the developed cost um, if there's no plans on doing that because that will move the land to actually start seeing development on these places and get Williams car parks, uh, sorry, Wilson's car parks out of the uh, central city. Oh my God, there was a Freudian slip. Um, so yeah, I will support it, uh, but I, I do echo the urgency around this because, as I said, three consented properties in the central city last month is not a good look. Thank you, David. Uh, thanks, yes, I, I'll support um, the amendment, um, although I would say that I have a strong empathy for the um, sentiments that Councillor Buck was uh, alluding to earlier, and I believe that if we go to the amendment, we also we're entering into a discussion 
on uh, a wider package and we can consider those sort of things when we're in there. So I think that actually gives us a better option to consider the wider picture as well. So I'll support um, the amendment. Okay, thanks Dave. Anyone else? Did you, oh, Jimmy? Thank you, yeah. Because we review this one, particular review the paragraph one, we can see actually this near term. At the moment, we can uh, put on the, the budget for the 100,000 to have a kind of discussion, you know, have dialogue with all those affected developers, etc. That's near term. But the second paragraph is important, is to be particular. We see the lost uh, review of the rates remission policy. They should be the part of the package of the mechanism incentive. We cannot separate. If separate one, uh, I'm a little bit you know, worried about it. If you separate one, you don't know the overall the, the picture. You know, actually, this uh, purpose is for the uh, incentive. You know, to overcome or address those uh, barriers that should be overall considered rather than just separate. This uh, this is my concern. And also, the regarding timing, just one and a half month, the staff will. You know, the presenter to us, the whole picture. You know, for us, easy for us to make the, a proper decision. A moment still short of the, the sufficient information. So I support the amendment. Thank you, Leanne. I just kind of want to remind people that, um, you know, at the council meeting um, last year in September, uh, we made very strong um, recommendations uh, arising from uh, what was the presentation on Project 8011. Uh, we asked uh, for the establishment of a um, central city development service as soon as possible to assist developers through regulatory processes, and it does actually sound that it's going on. Um, but rather than set aside a um, hundred thousand hundred thousand dollars for a one-year trial um, I think that as part of the report back they should come back with um, specific recommendations about what needs to be expanded because if they're working collaboratively with DCL and with um, others in, in terms of some of the work that's being done in this space then it seems to me that it would be much better than rather to to, to put a number on the budget it would be much better to come back and say what are you able to do uh, within your existing budgets that actually um, facilitates these discussions? Because it sounds like there's a lot that's happening, but there's a point at which the, um, the incentive flicks into the whole area of um, cost recovery. And, uh, and so it's finding a way of um, not letting that, that um, switch um, flick. The other thing was that we really wanted to have immediate advice on removing the barriers that are stopping residential development in the CBD. And we look around at those empty sites and we go past them. And uh, I know that people who are visitors to our city, they don't understand why uh, there are all of these empty sites that are not being developed. Um, and those that are earmarked for residential, we need to be ensuring that they are able to get on with it. But what I am going to say is that I will support the amendment because I do think that it achieves um, at least the area of um, momentum that we're all desperately crying out for because it has to happen. We can't afford to wait. And I refer people back to the, um, to the uh, momentum advice that we got um, last year and the uh, relentless pursuit of uh, residents for our central city was one of the key objectives of that. Um, there were five recommendations, and the number two was relentlessly pursue residents, catalyse and enable development, develop an integrated residential strategy, listen to the future residents, and that's by talking to the locals that are already there as well, structured market approach, um, and that's what's been <coughs> absent. So. Uh, and I, the rates remission has been on the agenda for a very long time, so uh, that's why I was keen to see it um, pursued. But I'm really comfortable with bringing the, the full range of recommendations back. Thank you. Okay. Right. Anyone else? Did you want a final? If I can. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll just say a few uh, bits. Do you mind if? 
Yeah, you can. Yeah, or do you want me to go after you or now? You can go now. Okay, thanks. Well, just before I get started on this, I just, for a matter of process, just wanted to say, um, mover and seconder, completely happy with the amendment that makes sense, so incorporate it into the substantive, that's fine. I was going to, do I get a right to reply on the amendment debate or not? No. no. Would I naturally? No. No. I don't, so, I don't so I'm just saying as a matter of process, the mover and seconder of the substantive is completely comfortable with the amendment to incorporate it into the substantive. Okay, cool. So if that's right. Um, no, no, and can I, do you mind if I debate it? Yeah? No. Cool. So the, the, the central city is all of our responsibility. Um, you'll remember that from when we were sworn in. Not just the mayor, not just Dion. All of us, the central city is about what's best for Christchurch. So if the central city doesn't thrive, the city doesn't thrive. Um, and it affects all of us, not just around this table, but all, everyone in Christchurch. So we have a superb action plan that incorporates a tailored suite of actions and interventions that has a lot of excellent work behind it and a lot of detail behind it. It's based on the local economic climate, the local feedback, and incorporates world's best practice. The rates for emission, for example, uh, is in the action plan for a reason, and it's because it works. It's a resident, resident incentive, not a developer incentive, um, but developers develop for residents to buy, so um, both of these have, uh, can't be seen in isolation. It's been successfully done in Wellington, it's been successfully done in Adelaide, and that's just to name two examples, so no one's uh, trying to reinvent the wheel here, we're just taking what, what works. Uh, developer incentives, very briefly, do, do two things. They get the development over the line, whether or not someone wants to push the button to invest in Christchurch. Uh, and the second thing that a developer incentive does is it reduces the price, because any development cost is simply what makes up the end cost. Reduce the development cost, then the end cost proportionally decreases. Uh, we can't affect cost of construction, we can't affect bank lending rules, we can't affect um, a Co uh, cost of land. You know, I would love to. Cost of land halved tomorrow in the central city. That would make a huge difference. But we can't do that. We have a couple of little things in, in front of us uh, uh, which are levers, uh, and that is rates, development contributions, and perhaps our capital program and that sort of stuff. So this is about taking that seriously, understanding what the problem is, and understanding what we can impact, and not worrying about the stuff we can't. But let's put our energy into things that we can impact. The resident incentives make living in the central city more attractive from a consumer perspective. So the rates incentives don't make the development cheaper, but it makes it more appealing to a potential purchaser. Um, I'm just going to slip down to the end here because I think it's all been said and I don't want to repeat um, other people's good debate. But the Central City Action Plan Project 81 has been widely lauded and praised. That endorsement has been across the board from the residence groups. Every single residence group in the Central City attends the development forum. Um, every single councillor is a part of that development forum. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce has endorsed it, the Property Council has endorsed it, and obviously the Council itself has endorsed it, endorsed it. So we have a really good action plan. The only wee chink in the armour is if we don't action it. So the action plan is an action plan, not an inaction plan. So very supportive of the recommendations there, but we've got to get cracking because this issue is huge for Christchurch. And if we get it wrong, we will stuff Christchurch um, in the long term. It's a huge issue. And if the central city doesn't work, the wider city doesn't work. And this is on all of our shoulders. This is on all of us. Thanks, James. OK, well, I'll wrap up. Um, yeah, I support this amendment. I think we have to, you know, remember that this isn't going to happen overnight. We want 20,000 people in the central city. That's probably another three to 5,000 households. But that has a big financial impact. I mean, if we had 5,000 extra households in the central city, that would be roughly around 12, 13 million a year in rates. You know, over 10 years, potentially 150 million. So there are big trade-offs here, but I'm not seeing any information about how we play with those trade-offs. So I think that's what I would expect to see in the report, more detailed information about if we make this investment, this is going to happen. The, the impact of having 20,000 people living in the central city for the central city in terms of attraction, in terms of economic activity, in terms of business attraction, and we are starting to see that stuff. And of course, we're still waiting for the flagship, the Metro Sports Facility. You know, 10 years to build a blue and swimming pool is ridiculous. Uh, but that's holding things up. Obviously, the court theatre, um, the multi-use arena, as those things come into the city, it's going to be an incredible place to live. I mean, I've lived here around the corner for three years. It's fantastic. You walk everywhere. Um, that's only going to continue. But what I'd like to see from this um, report back is some detailed suggestions which show the financial trade-offs, because then you might have a different conversation. At the moment, 
there's not enough information and it probably doesn't sound that great. So happy to support this um, and I will put the motions separately um, and we'll vote on those. So I'll put item one first. All those in favour say aye. Aye. All those against? No. no. We have a division on that, please. I think it was carried. For resolution one, mm -hmm. Councillor Keown, yes. Councillor Galloway, yes. Councillor Chen, yes. Councillor Davidson, yes. Councillor Cotter, yes. the Mayor, no. Councillor Turner, yes. Councillor Scandrick, no. Councillor Goff, yes. Councillor Burke, Councillor Livingston? No. Councillor East? Yes. Councillor Clearwater? Yes. Councillor Swiggs? Yes. Councillor Templeton? Yes. And Councillor Manji? Uh, no. So that's no, carried? One, two, three, four for no. Okay. Right, now I will put item two. All those in favour say aye. 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 Against? Aye. Okay, that's carried. Just um, note Glenn. Glenn's no. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Okay, that took a bit longer than expected. Okay, 